Through this presentation, three heuristic algorithms will be explained. Two of them are types of hill climbing algorithms, which are steepest ascent hill climbing method and stochastic hill climbing method. The other heuristic algorithm is simulated annealing. Let's first remember what we have seen about heuristic algorithms. Algorithms for hard problems like traveling salesman problem, Boolean satisfiability problem, and nonlinear programming problem have a huge search space when the problem input size is high. In such large search spaces, different search strategies are used to find the optimum solution. These search strategies can be classified under two categories, uninformed or blind search algorithms and informed or heuristic search algorithms. Some well-known algorithms like breadth first, depth first, and uniform cost search are in blind search methods. Heuristic search algorithms include hill climbing methods, simulated annealing, best first search, a star algorithm, and so on. Heuristic algorithms use a problem specific evaluation and neighborhood function. That's why they are called informed. Heuristic algorithms are generally used in local search process with artificial intelligence, evolutionary, and genetic algorithms or optimization solutions. Generally, the aim is to find a local optimal solution rather than the global optimum. However, it is also possible to search the global optimum by repeating the local search multiple times with a random initial solution. We will talk about the idea behind the hill climbing methods, their advantages and weaknesses. We will focus on steepest ascent hill climbing and stochastic hill climbing methods by giving examples. We will talk about simulated annealing method briefly. Also, we will discuss about their time and space complexities. Then, we will summarize all and finish the presentation. For maximization problems, the algorithm is called hill climbing, and for minimization problems, it is called gradient descent. Hill climbing, or gradient descent methods, use an iterative improvement technique, just like all local search methods. The technique is applied to a single point, or a solution, in the search space. We have an initial namely current point. In the beginning, in each iteration, a new point is selected from the neighborhood of the current point. If that new point is better, in the light of the evaluation function, it becomes the current point. Otherwise, some other neighbor is selected and tested against the current point. Whenever no further improvement is possible, or a predetermined time or some number of evaluation is received, the algorithm terminates. A few versions of hill climbing algorithms exist. The main difference is selection criterion of a new solution for comparison with the current solution. One version of a simple iterated hill climbing algorithm, which is steepest ascent, is given in the next slide. In order to get the global optimum, let's examine steepest ascent hill climbing method with multiple random starts. A variable t and best are initialized. The outer loop starts by selecting a current point vc from the search space. Via the inner loop, fitness amounts of all neighbors of the current point are calculated with the evaluation function. The best neighbor vn is found. If vn is better than vc, then vn is the new current point. At the end of inner loop, vc is expected to be the local optimum. Via the outer loop, VC is compared with the best so far, and the variable best is updated. At the end of outer loop, VC is expected to be the global optimum. The algorithm terminates when the time T reaches to bound which is max. The algorithm can be illustrated like this. 
In each iteration, it picks a random point from the search space. Then, by moving towards the best neighbor, it climbs through the hill and finds the local optimum. The highest hill, which is climbed until that time, is assumed to be the global optimum. Before giving an example for steepest ascent hill climbing, let's talk about the advantages of hill climbing techniques. There is one appealing advantage for hill climbing methods. They're very easy to apply. All you need is the representation of solutions, the evaluation function, and a measure that defines the neighborhood around a given solution. Another advantage is that, even though it is not always global optimum, they generally come up with a satisfactory solution. Let's try to understand how steepest ascent hill climbing method works on traveling salesman problem. Assume that we have such a simple weighted graph. Possible solutions can be represented in permutation form. It means a solution is a string which contains A, B, C, and D exactly once. For example, A, C, B, D, and B, A, C, D are two possible solutions. Think them like an order of traversed cities. Evaluation function, evil, returns the sum of weights of traversed edges. For instance, EVAL, ACBD, returns 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6, which is 13. There are several ways to obtain neighbors of a solution. One of these ways is to obtain neighbors by swapping two of the characters or cities in the solution string. For example, A, B, C, D have neighbors like B, A, C, D, A, D, C, B, A, B, D, C, and so on. Neighbors of A, B, C, D are actually shaping a tree, which may have repetitive nodes or shaping a graph. A sample tree is in the figure, some neighbors are missing here. Also, remember that each solution, or say node, has a fitness value evaluated by the evil function. Hill climbing algorithm chooses a random initial solution and moves towards the neighbor which has maximum fitness value. Independently from our TSP example, the simulation on the right hand side is given in order to visualize the search. Assume that the nodes are the solutions, and the numbers inside them are fitness of the solutions, meaning the result of evil function. The best neighbor is selected as the new current point in each iteration. Steepest ascent hill climbing method is a memory-less method. It doesn't store the local optima, which are obtained in each iteration. The evaluated solutions are evaluated again and compared with their neighbors and the current solution repeatedly, since the initial solution is selected randomly. Therefore, a time limit T is set to find the final optimum solution. The time complexity depends on this limit. Also, the evaluation function may be too costly, depending on the problem. In this case, the runtime increases extremely. Since it is memoryless, only neighbors of the current solution are held in the memory to find the best of them. The space complexity is big O B where B is the maximum number of neighbors of a solution. Although hill climbing methods end up with a satisfactory solution most of the time, they have several weaknesses. One, and the most important weakness is getting stuck in local optima. Also, we have no information about how much the discovered local optimum deviates from the global optimum or even from other local optima. The obtained optimum depends on the initial configuration. It means that the selection of initial point is so important. In general, it is not possible to provide an upper bound for the computation time, which makes us unable to tell a certain time complexity. There are several search landscapes. Eight samples of them are shown in the figure. The ideal 
An easiest search landscape is the first one. Reaching the global optimum is possible from any initial point. Second and third landscapes are comparingly manageable. Fourth landscape has many local optima. So many iterations will be needed in case of gradient descent method. Fifth one has a misleading area on the left-hand side. It will challenge the gradient descent method. In sixth landscape, the gradient descent method cannot find the best neighbor if the initial point is in the straight part. Seventh and eight landscapes are too hard to find even the local optima. Before modifying the steepest ascent hill climbing algorithm, let's highlight some points. Remember that the inner loop of the algorithm always returns a local optimum. This procedure only escapes local optima by starting a new search from a new location. There are max attempts altogether. The final outcome of the algorithm is the best solution so far. Now let's modify the algorithm in that way. Remember we were checking all the neighbors of the current point and selecting the best one. Now, select only one point, call it VN, from neighborhood of a current point VC. Accept this new point VN as the current point with some probability depending on the relative merit of these two points. Relative merit can be evil VC minus evil VN, which is the difference between the values returned by the evaluation function for these two points. The new algorithm has been like on the right-hand side, with these modifications on steepest ascent hill climbing algorithm, and it is called stochastic hill climbing. The probability of moving towards Vn is calculated by the formula given. Let's talk about two features of stochastic hill climbing algorithm. First, if you have noticed, stochastic hill climber has just one loop. So, there is no need to repeat its iteration starting from different random points. Second, there is some probability p to accept the newly selected point Vn. This means that moving from the current point to the new neighbor Vn is probabilistic. It's possible to move towards a worse point than the current point. However, the probability of movement depends on the difference in merit between these two competitors and on the value of an additional parameter t, notice that the parameter t is constant during the execution of the algorithm. For example, assume that the evaluation for the current and next points are 107 and 120, respectively. Then the difference will be minus 13. It means the new point Vn is better than Vc. For greater t values, the importance of relative merit decreases. If t is huge, for example 10 to the power of 10, the probability of acceptance approaches to 0.5. In other words, the search becomes random. On the other hand, if t value is very small, for example 1, then p approaches to 1 as well. In other words, the stochastic hill climbing method reverts into an ordinary hill climbing method. Therefore, an appropriate value of t must be found for a particular problem. It should not be either too low or too high. For instance, when t is equal to 10, the probability of accepting the new point will be 0.5 in case of equal fitness values. That seems reasonable because it doesn't matter which you choose when each are of equal quality. If we compare two types of hill climbing methods, we can say that accepting a worse solution with a probability decreases the chance of getting stuck in local optima. Stochastic hill climbing method allows the move towards the red direction, shown in the figure. However, 
Like other hill climbing methods, this method tends to get stuck in local optima as well, because it forgets the previous solutions. Stochastic hill climbing method is also a memorless method. Again, initial solution is selected randomly. Different from the steepest ascent hill climbing method, there is no need to find of all the neighbors. That's why the stochastic hill climbing method is more efficient in case of computational complexity. But, still, a time limit is set to find the final optimum solution. The time complexity depends on this limit. Also, depending on the problem, the evaluation function may be too costly. In this case, the runtime increases extremely. Since it is memoryless, only one neighbor of the current solution is held in the memory to compare with the current point. The space complexity is constant big O, 1. Finally, let's modify the stochastic hill climbing algorithm. Stochastic hill climbing algorithm uses a constant t value through the search. Instead of using a constant t, we can use a floating value. t can be decreased during the run, so that it starts with a random search and the final stages resemble an ordinary hill climbing method. Such a modification leads us to another algorithm, which is called simulated annealing. Pseudocode of the simulated annealing algorithm will be like on the right hand side. This algorithm is also known as Monte Carlo annealing, statistical cooling, probabilistic hill climbing, and so on. It is based on an analogy taken from thermodynamics. As we said before, the values of t are quite small towards the end of the run. So, the final stages of simulated annealing become like an ordinary hill climbing method. As distinct from stochastic hill climbing, new points are always accepted if they are better than the current point. There is a probability limit of acceptance only when the new points are worse. A simulation of simulated annealing is given in this slide. Temperature is the T value. When T is large, the algorithm scans a larger area. While T is decreasing, it scans a narrower area, but the deviation from the global optimum decreases as well. If you want to learn more details about the simulated annealing method, you can check this link for a nice article. Again, just like the hill climbing methods, simulated annealing tends to get stuck in local optima, and we have no information about how close the discovered local optimum to the global optimum is. Additionally, we have to determine the initial T, the cooling ratio, the termination condition, and the halting criterion. All these have an impact on the performance of the algorithm. Thus, we can tune the algorithm. Same as the stochastic hill climbing method, initial solution is selected randomly, and there is no need to find of its own neighbors. That's why simulated annealing is more efficient in case of computational complexity than the steepest ascent hill climbing. Still, a time limit is set to find the final optimum solution, and the time complexity depends on this limit. Again, the evaluation function may be too costly, depending on the problem. In this case, the runtime increases extremely. Also, decreasing t very gradually may cause slowness. Since it is memoryless, only one neighbor of the current solution is held in the memory to compare with the current. The space complexity is constant. Let's summarize what we have seen and finish the presentation. Hill climbing and simulated annealing methods are used where a local search is needed. 
It may be in some artificial intelligence solutions, genetic algorithms, evolutionary algorithms, and optimization problems. There are a few versions of hill climbing algorithms, and they mainly differ in the selection of a new solution, for comparison with the current solution. In steepest ascent hill climbing method, the speed of moving towards the local optimum is very high, because it moves towards the best neighbor each time. In stochastic hill climbing method, the current solution is compared with its only one neighbor, and even if its neighbor is better, moving towards this neighbor depends on a probability. So, there is no need to find all neighbors. Also, it decreases the possibility of getting stuck in local optimum. It will probably have a shorter runtime for the same problem. In simulated annealing method, the search starts with a process like random search and ends with an ordinary hill climbing. Additionally, new points are always accepted if they are better than the current point, and that is different from stochastic hill climbing. Hill climbing and simulated annealing methods are usually easy to implement and give satisfying results in finding the local optima. On the other hand, it is hard to obtain globally optimal solutions with these methods because they tend to get stuck in local optima. I would like to thank you all for your attention and understanding about my way of presenting. I hope it was understandable enough.